Have yourself a very witchy vlogmas. Day 12! Look at us! We have something that looks sort of like December happening in the sky. We have wind. We even had rain, which was more like a brief drizzle. But it got our cars wet and it got the ground wet. So, yay! Finally, we're putting our Christmas tree up tonight. So I'm pretty happy that we have at least something that feels winterish, a little bit more so than all that sun, sun, sun. We're gonna make some hot chocolate and we're gonna put some decorations up. Yeah, yeah. My mom sent me an album of the kid with his cousins. They went to go see Christmas lights. So apparently they had a good time in Bakersfield. My mommy and my kid. It's windy and raining both. Finally, we get some weather just in time for the new moon. So awesome, except that bag of crap is getting rained on. But all the rest of this stuff, I mean, remember when I said I put things in trash bags? I won't lie in. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. This is all under our patio, except for, I don't even know what that is. I don't know what any of this is anymore. Am I living a life right now that's been conditioned or that's been uh, filtered through, you know, uh, the society, the filters that we come from and kind of like look to see what is it that we're working towards and why, right? There are the witchy books so far, the witchy fiction so far. A couple of boxes, you can see the Diatomaceous Earth in there still. This one, I don't think got the Diatomaceous Earth. This one has been cedar sided. And then here's a big problem. <laughs> All of these books used to be in this bookshelf, but they were like double stacked and then also lined up on the ground and I'm trying to be wise. I have already thrown out, I don't know, a lot of books, maybe 10 boxes of books, which feels good on some level and feels kind of weird on the other level. But all I have now is that little space down there and then all of these. And I'm trying to do it in categories. See, I mean, what a mess napkins and trash bags <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to be smart about it and categorize them as I would use them and whatever this is where it's at so far here's what I don't need because well first of all it's in fabulous condition <laughs> but also I mean thanks to thesaurus.com who needs a thesaurus anymore this, however, though, even though I love dictionary.com, I love to look up etymology. I just like words, you know? I'm a word nerd, so thesaurus.com, dictionary.com. This is not going anywhere because this belonged to Bob Philpot. It's hard to explain who Bob was, but in a nutshell, he was my ex-husband's mom's live-in boyfriend he got in a car accident he was a football star a local hometown football star he got in a car accident when he was very very young and lived in a wheelchair for most of his life and I knew him I spent a lot of time with him actually he was very very smart he played guitar um, but I knew him when he was going through a lot like they kept operating on him and taking out more and more of his back and he kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter and the house really smelled because of all of the medical things that he had wrong going on and um, but he was very inspiring he figured out how to drive a car um, in his wheelchair and he found a job for himself which was riding around in the city buses to report on the bus drivers how well they were driving, if they were safe, and all that stuff, but um, he died, and it was sad. I mean, he he's an example of creating the kick-ass life of your dreams, using what you've got, making the best of what you have. I mean, some people would just be so depressed in that situation, but he was not. He was a very inspiring person, so 
this stays. This cracks me up. This is Tammy Faye Baker, and when I was a kid, I used to listen to this on vinyl. This is the actual vinyl that I listened to. Um, How do you spell relief? J-E-S-U-S. -S. How do you spell relief? J-E-S-U-S. -S. J is just for asking. E is for easy. Oh my god. <laughs> Joanna and Steph. Hmm, I wonder who wrote that way, way back in the day. And I don't know what this was about, but clearly I have a lifelong thing for pink ink. And then this is another thing that I just loved when I was a kid. <laughs> Keith Green. I used to lie awake at night and see your face on the ceiling. What a bad feeling. That is a song about Satan. And Sweet Comfort. These are the three Christian albums that I like wore out. But Breaking the Ice is... Sorry, that's Diatomaceous Earth. I sprinkled Diatomaceous Earth all over the floor before taking this stuff out in case any little bed bugs escaped and any cracks. I wanted to kill those suckers dead. But um, this song, I've told this story before, but there was a really popular girl in fourth grade named Darcy Ford. And um, I don't think she thought I was very cool. I was such a nerd and I wanted her to think I was cool. And all the cool kids were writing the names of their favorite bands on their peaches. And so I wrote, <laughs> sweet comfort on mine and she like leaned over to read it one day and apparently I couldn't spell very well because I wrote sweat comfort and she read it out loud very loudly for all the surrounding kids to hear and laugh she's like sweat comfort what is that oh. I was like trying to pull it off because <laughs> I didn't want her to know that I had misspelled it on top of being a nerd so I was like it's like totally like a really cool band. You don't know them? Like, oh my god, we're breaking the ass with love. Okay, so there's still a lot to do, but, 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 we have a blank space for Le Christmas Tea. That is a stack of my favorite cookbooks. So many books and boxes. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about the ones I threw away, but, that's the life of a book nerd, people. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm like so excited about all this blank space. I hardly ever have any blank space in my home. <laughs> and it's a big house. Uh, Tanner, what's in your pockets? Nothing in my pockets. Dude, you're not allowed to do that. Yay! Finally! The Christmas tree! The Christmas tree! Ooh, there's a story behind this Christmas tree. Yes, there is. So this is very exciting. Woo, yay. Underneath all this, this is the Christmas stuff. This is the Christmas box. Woohoo! there's Tanner stocking. Would you believe I've been gifted bacon? <laughs> I was gifted bacon. I actually, I like to buy my bacon from US Wellness Meats because they practice ethical, humane farming. All of the meat sold through that website. Um, you get to read about it and it's just a great company. But this company, Peterson's, does make a sugar-free bacon. Uh, I buy my sugar-free bacon. This is not sugar-free, but the reason I'm telling you about sugar-free bacon, which you can also get at US Wellness Meats, is because <laughs> Look at this crazy looking mess. I just wrapped these apple slices in pumpkin pie spice and next I'm gonna wrap them in bacon and then bake them in the oven and that is a Whole30 compliant dessert snack treat. And if you're doing the Whole30 or if you're reading about it and thinking about it, you're probably cheering at me right now because you're like, what am I gonna eat? I want the sweet stuff. This is something you can eat and it's freaking awesome. You wanna cut the strips of bacon into, I don't know, it depends on how big your apple slices are. These are tiny little apples, like little, little bitty apples. So um, these are, each slice is cut in a third, so it depends on how big the apples are, but you wanna cut it just enough to wrap it around and then tuck under at the bottom, 
and then you'll cook it for about 20 minutes in a 350 degree oven. And there you have it, another Instagram lie, only it's not a lie. This time, it's the real deal. This tastes fabulous. So our Christmas tree was born in this box. This is what it looks like right now. It is in that part <laughs> and that part and that part. I have never had a fake tree before, but I just decided that I am sick of getting pine needles everywhere and trying to squeeze a live Christmas tree into my little tiny car. So this actually, we got this tree at the very beginning of Bed bug gate before I knew that it was going to turn into a two month fiasco. So the first time the exterminator came to the house, we had to be out of the house for four hours and Tanner and I, we were in Pasadena shopping at Target and we saw this Christmas tree. It is a six foot tall tree, like a fake Douglas fir. It will look a lot better, I promise you, once I get it all together. But it was only $27 and I was so excited. Um, and I made the employees dig around in the back because they didn't have any more except for the floor model. And then we went to two other targets and looked online before we finally found one. So it's like my major, major Christmas score. And it has been sitting in the back of my car ever since. So it's very exciting to finally, this is so, looks so wonky. Let's see how good I can make this thing look. And this is where I say to be continued because it's late at night and I cannot get this dang thing untangled. Hi, Odie. Hi, Odie. You like the Christmas tree so far? I think it's looking pretty decent for a $27 tree, but uh, to be continued. We're gonna do the ornaments tomorrow. Much love, everybody. Have yourself a very merry Vlogmas. Peace.